Hi guys, my name is Anu. I am a, a director in the engineering department at Ariaka, and I would like to take some time to walk you guys through the single plane of management that Hugo and Nati mentioned. We call it My Ariaka. It is a portal that our customers and our partners can log into to take a look at their accounts, how the service is doing for them, how much utilization do they have on their network, what does my bill look like, and all of that stuff. So I am going to try and limit myself for the sake of time to six use cases, but if time permits, I'll walk you through more stuff. So these are the six key use cases I would like to walk you guys through. The first one is WAN performance, where you can monitor your wide area network to see how well it is doing. Security observability control, which is where you can look to see the three security services that Hugo and Natty mentioned to see how their configuration is looking like, what is the volume of traffic on it, what is the health on it, so on and so forth. You could also troubleshoot what happened to your network um, by receiving alerts um, and their corresponding notifications to your inboxes. And then in addition to that, um, earlier we mentioned that we do provide last mile circuit management. I will show you what that looks like on my Ariaka. Um, and unlike other vendors, we actually show you when we mess up. So if we have a service outage and we violate SLA, we actually will show that to you on your portal and you can take a look at it and claim credit. Um, I'll show you what that looks like on the portal. And the last one is contract management. So if you have purchased um, a service via us and you want to see what did you buy, um, how far along are we in deployment, what, did I, what didn't I deploy, did I deploy too much, you can see all of that on the portal. And I will walk you through these one by one. The first one is WAN performance. I'm going to switch to the portal now. Okay, so for the demo purposes, I will be using two customer accounts to walk you through all of the various use cases. The first one you're seeing is Ariaka's corporate network. This is actually our utilization at this time. Um, as you can see, the My Ariaka portal is organized into home, monitor, config, status, and reports. And a real customer who's paying us will also have a billing tab at the top, and I'll show you what that looks like. So overall, the home page gives you a 10,000 foot high level insight on key actionable intelligence on how your network is doing. So how many sites do you have connected? How many are down? Are some of them utilizing more than you anticipate? Um, if you are a billing customer, you'll also see the amount of, um, like the invoice amount that's due to you and all that stuff. And all of the components at the top are clickable. So you can click and go see the details of um, these particular information that's at the top. Right below that is an, uh, a high level view of all of the applications that are being used by your various sites. So at a global level, you can see what are your popular applications. And right beside that, you can see the utilization health of your sites. So the circle, the green circles indicate the size of them or how large is your site subscription. And the more green they are, they're in better utilization health. As you get congested or if you're exceeding your subscription, you will get closer to orange and then to red. I will show you another example of where this actually um, is not looking so green. But all of these are clickable components, so you can click and go see details of what they are. Further down below, there's a map view that will let you kind of figure out where you are placed in the world and what pops you're connected to. And then further below, you can see your ISP's utilization in terms of its percentage. Again, those little green dots will change color to yellow and then red if you're getting congested. Do you have the ability to dial back based on the application? Dial back? L yeah, tune, tune how much bandwidth a specific application can use. Yes, we can rate limit application by assigning them QoS classes, and I will show you what that configuration looks like in a minute. Yeah. OK, so again, you can click all of these and go to the corresponding site, but I want to point out a very specific um, set of sites and statistics that I can show you. So I'm going to drop down and select our local San Mateo site and show you what um, the traffic here looks like. So the page here actually shows you the total wide area network of any given site that you're interested in looking at. Not just the site's connectivity to Ariaka Pop, but your entire site's wide area network. This could be you have two ISPs at the sites, you can visualize both of them. You might even have MPLS at your site that's connected to our ANAP devices. You can look at that as, as well and you can see how much traffic is going over that. So it gives you a very clear idea about what is happening with your wide area network. I'm gonna to switch to a custom time range to show you some interesting data that I gathered over the last couple of days and click apply. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that there are different dimensions that WAN is separated into. Up here, there is how much of your WAN traffic is by each of your providers, 
how much of your WAN traffic is by each of your destination network, where we use the word network to say how much of your WAN traffic went to Ariakas Pop, how much perhaps went to a window like Zscaler for your cloud security needs, how much did you just send directly over the internet without sending it to Ariaka? So you can see that distribution in this graph, followed by other dimensions like how much traffic went to a remote site, or what are your predominant applications that are being used on the wide area network, and if you had multiple zones on the site, how much traffic came from each of these zones. So all of these dimensions are visible to you right here. And these graphs are organized such that there are three views for them. The ones that are the bubbles and the tree maps show you volume distribution. So which are your popular ones by simply looking at the size of the bubble or the size of the squares. Uh, if you're looking at the rate, you can switch to a tree map kind of view and you can expand it so you can kind of see sorry, a time series view and you can see what is the rate of um, traffic in each of these. Or if you are a table kind of person, you can switch to a table view and you can see these. These are also interactive, so you can either click the bubble or click a row on the table and then drill into that view. So now you're looking at what happened to the traffic that came to Ariakas Pop. So from the site to Ariakas Pop, this is the volume of traffic that landed here, right? So you can keep clicking and drilling and this is um, essentially helping you identify what is this traffic? Why does it look odd? Like who's sending all this traffic? So you'd be able to click and drill to figure this out. So over the last two days, I generated some traffic and I called it network field day test traffic. So you can see quite a large volume of it from San Mateo um, to, um, is actually that chunk of traffic that I generated. So I can click it and then see, oh, that's my traffic. And then I can look at the flows and be like, is it just me? Oops, large time window. Let me just switch out like to a smaller window and I can see the flow. So let me just switch back to uh, a specific time window that I'm interested in and I can take a look at the flows. So this will list all the clients and servers involved in any traffic. You don't have to drill in to see it. You can stay at the site level and try and figure out who are all these flows that are involved um, in the volume of traffic that you're seeing. The other cool thing about my Ariaka is my Ariaka has a a context sensitive floating nav bar at the bottom. Um, this changes as you move around. So let's say at the site level, you just get to see what are the ANAPs at the site and what are the all the list of flows that are at the site. But you can also say, okay, I specifically am interested in what happened to um, Ariaka and his traffic. You can um, see that the nav bar changed. Now you can see the health, the compression, the TCP optimization, all of these statistics that are relevant to Ariaka's pop and its traffic. So let me switch over to compression to show you some of the things that Nadi was talking about earlier. So to be able to showcase the benefits of compression and deduplication, I sent a couple of traffic and I fiddled with the configuration. So right here where my mouse is, you can see there is a green peak and a very low orange bar. So you can see that the traffic I sent, um, several hundred Mbps of traffic got compressed down to one Mbps of traffic. And then to just showcase what happens when I turned off compression, for that same bit of traffic, I turned off compression, and you can see my um, the, the traffic experienced by the end client declined to um, like 30 to 40 Mbps as, as opposed to several hundred Mbps. So it actually showcases the benefits of compression where your wide area network ends up needing much less capacity to be able to support several hundred Mbps worth of LAN traffic, okay? Okay, so uh, quick quick question. Sorry to interrupt. This is uh, Ed Armouche. What what algorithms are you using for compression, and does that induce any additional latency to uh, to connectivity? Yes. Yeah, so each of the various optimization engines that are in the path does introduce one or two milliseconds of um, latency in the path. So by engaging in compression and uh, deduplication using ARR, we um, see about one to two, sometimes three milliseconds of latency increase on the traffic. Okay. So in addition to being able to monitor um, the traffic, you can also take a look at the configuration that you've applied and you can actually make active changes. You don't necessarily have to call customer support or anything like that. So you can find the site you're interested in, look at its current configuration, click edit, make changes like you want to add an extra subnet, add an extra VLAN, add a firewall policy, connect to a cloud security connector. You can do all of those things, make changes to this form, and there is a submit button that shows up at the bottom. Click it and wait for the status to change and you're good to go. So it is completely self-managed. That way it will help you make the changes that you need on your network. 
Um, additionally, we also let you see the current status of your network. So your current status is um, a collection of information that tells you what is the health of your site to the pop, so you can see if the tunnels are up. You can also click debug and see what happened if your tunnels went down. You can take a look at the BG, if there's BGP configured, you can see BGP status. If the ANAPs have interfaces down, you could see that. Um, and we also provide tabular content, like monthly reports that tell you how your sites are doing. Are you close to your subscription throughout your month? Are you underutilizing, or do you need an upgrade? You can see all of this data from um, the status, uh, the reports tab of MyAriaka. So that was use case one. Use case two is security and observability control. So the three security um, services that we talked about earlier, so the first one is the, the basic firewall that the ANAP comes with. So the basic firewall that the ANAP comes with allows you to configure multiple zones for your site. And for each zone, you can write firewall rules, like you want to permit and deny traffic that is either identified using layer three, layer four um, you know, traffic identifiers, or you can discover applications using our a DPI engine and then use that identifier to then block or permit traffic. So you can write control configs for all of this. So I'll show you an example of what I did for the demo. So for, I identified a couple of different pieces of traffic as an application and I wrote a control policy for it. This is a control policy, I'm gonna click update. A control policy lets you write custom rules for select sites or for all of the sites of, a, of an organization and you can decide that you want to control um, security for a specific zone. So I'm going to say I want um, some kind of test uh, and I'm going to select for this zone, I want this application denied. So I can click, <coughs> deselect the option for permit and click OK. And I can say for another zone, I want to permit traffic. So the, the portal lets you adjust the configuration for firewall purposes right here. And you can say, I want to redirect this application via a specific network. So I can um, send it to a connected site that's already connected or send it over direct internet. So make all the necessary changes you need and click OK. I could also go ahead and say this particular application, I do not want ARIA to touch it. I don't want you to do compression. I, I don't want you to do any of that. And you can come here and you can say, I want to customize optimization. I want to turn off optimization. I want to reclassify what QoS class this traffic belongs to. Or I can also say, I want to do load balancing for this. I want to do path replication. So I want to steer how the traffic is um, arriving at Ariaka's pop. So you can do all of these controls right here um, and write custom rules for your application. And when you click submit, this becomes a change request that gets propagated right away. You don't have to wait. And then over onto the monitor side, if I had written a rule like that, I would be able to go look at the land zone for which I wrote such a rule and then go look at the rule and it's hit count. So I can click zone policies. These are policies that our engineers have written over time. You can click them and you can see their hit counts to see how popular it is or they need to reevaluate it. Okay, so the second security service that Hugo and Natty mentioned is the ability to host um, virtual machines um, for Palo Alto and checkpoint kind of firewalls on our ANAPs. So under the config tab of My Ariaka, you can see there's a tab called virtual machines where you can deploy your own virtual machine on an existing ANAP. So here in our Bangalore office, we have deployed um, a checkpoint firewall um, and our customers can turn them up by themselves. They actually don't need um, any external help for this. They can go ahead and turn up their VMs. Once the VMs are configured, their states and statuses can be monitored right here they can be turned off, like you can stop the VM, restart the VM, take the VM out of the data plane, put it back in if you wanted to. You can do all of these manipulations right here and they are active changes. So as soon as you press the button, it will turn off the VM if you need it to. Uh, and over onto the monitor tab, if I select Bangalore, the site that I was talking about, um, I can see that there's a little floating navbar item here called virtual machines, which actually lets me monitor this VM. This particular VM does not have traffic at this time, but you can see the traffic volume. You can also look at the system health and network health of this VM. Okay, and the last item that Hugo mentioned is the ability to connect remote users using private access. So on the monitor and the status tabs of MyAriaka, you can actually keep an eye on how private access service is doing. You can take a look at how many unique users are logged in. So monitor tab lets you look at any period of time and just figure out how many users were logged in at that time, how many failed sessions were there, 
how much volume of traffic were sent by all of these users and so on. The similar pieces of data are also available under status tab where you can take a look at the current state of the network as far as your private users are concerned. So you can see what are my popular pops, which are my pop, like which users have the most amount of sessions, or which users have the most amount of volume of data, or if there were lots of fail sessions, you can click over and see what's causing the fail sessions, why are they failing, like there's reasons that it'll tell you like why did it fail, which pop did they try to connect to, and so on. So this is the security observability piece that we have today. I have a question. Yes. I see that there's lots of uh, configuration parameters and I'm trying to understand what is the line of delineation between what a customer configures themselves versus mm -hmm. what is configured by you as a managed service provider. Right, so the MyArec as a portal, almost everything that you see in the config tab, I would say literally almost everything except maybe one page where we show um, just config information, it's completely configurable by the end user, um, as long as they have the privileges to be able to write the config. We have a separate portal that our operators use, we call it our network management console, which can also be used independently by our support engineers to configure these exact same things and more on the other side. But everything you see on my Ariaka under config tab is completely usable by any right per permissible user. Okay, yeah. so you mentioned that there's a configuration change made and it creates a change request. Right, which means so there are, um, our customers can opt for this. It's actually, we have two modes. One is where you click a button and that button um, immediately takes, takes effect, the change just takes effect in the network. Or the customer can say, no, I want this to be fully managed. So my change request just becomes what we call an order or other change management request that goes to the customer support team. They will review it and they'll say, okay, this looks fine or I have questions, I'm gonna get on a call with you. So they have the option of moving a request along instead of just executing it. Got it, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so the next item is network observability and troubleshooting. So. You may not be a person who is on my Ariaka just looking at stats all day. You might just be doing your own thing and you want to be notified when something happens. So my Ariaka has the ability to let you configure alerts um, so that, and then correspondingly a notification so that you get an email when something happens that actually interests you instead of just sitting and staring at graphs. So I'm gonna show you an example of what that might look like. I had the system email me when one of our customers um, subscribe bandwidth or their utilization over Ariaka exceeded a certain threshold. This is something that they might be interested in, but it doesn't have to be the only item. So this particular email arrived saying that um, a site exceeded um, their subscribe bandwidth uh, over us, and I can just click view details, and it will take me to that specific alert on my Ariaka. So I've already logged in as myself, so I, if I hadn't, it would have just taken me to the login page. I'd log in and it would land me here. It's telling me that the alert is no longer active, but it was a bandwidth usage alert that uh, happened to this particular site in the outbound direction because the site bandwidth exceeded 95% of the configured um, subscribe bandwidth. And what was the actual value? It was 99%. So what I would do in this case is to figure out why did this happen? I would go to monitor, and this is that same site. I would switch to the outbound direction and click apply. Uh, and because it's subscribe bandwidth, I would click VPN Pal Ariaka, and it actually shows me that the site actually is um, approaching or exceeding subscribe bandwidth. So there are regular peaks of what's going on. So I can again drill into a specific area that interests me and see, is that normal? Is it normal that the site that I'm referencing is sending this much data to this remote site? And is it normal that NetApp is the application that's doing this? So they'd be able to do this. And even if it isn't, then they want to drill further, they can go look at flows and see who are the clients that are trying to access this. Is it normal that there are that many flows and that much volume of traffic? Um, now, in addition to this type of alert, you can also click up here on the bell icon and see other alerts that are currently active in the network. So this takes you to the alert dashboard where you can see active alerts in the system. We report three types of alerts. We have health, utilization, and billing. Uh, each of these have thresholds that you can manipulate yourself, and I'll show you what the config for that looks like. And you can choose to be notified for these. You don't have to be notified if you don't need it to be, but you can. And you can also, you can also say, hey, I have a network event that's scheduled that's coming up and is going to cause quite a bit of flutter. I want to snooze one of these so it doesn't keep popping back up on the dashboard. You can do that. You can click an alert and you can snooze it. You can say, I want to snooze it for an hour, a day, so on and so forth. 
You can also go into history and see all of the previous alerts that have happened in the past. Okay. Um, the system starts up with the default set of config for what alerting should be available to you. So in the alert policies, you can click the default site policy and see a list of alerts that are available for you to subscribe yourselves to. So you can click edit and say, I don't want all of these. I'm just going to turn off some. So you can just click that button, turn off your config. But if you have turned on a config, you have three, three to four additional things that you can control. Uh, one is a set of thresholds for which your various severities kick in, so minor, major, critical. You can also decide what type of notification do you need. Do you only need to be notified when the event occurs? Do you want to be notified when the event is resolved? Do you want every single notification? Like if there is a ton of these events, do you want to be notified for all of them, or do you want us to dampen it for you? So all of these can be configured by the user. And you can also say for each types of alerts, who needs to be notified or which groups of users need to be notified. So we have notification schemes that you can set up for yourself to say, like for this demo purpose, I set myself up um, to say, I only care about usage for bandwidth as the notification that I receive. But other people can say, other users of this customer can say, I want a different combination and set themselves up for it. Okay. All right. The next one is last mile circuit management. So on the home screen of my Ariaka, um, I showed you that you could take a look at all of the um, ISPs and their percentage utilization that you could have. You can click on it and be taken to that specific site and you can see the utilization um, for that site's various bandwidth. So I'm just gonna expand it right here and you can see what's going on. Um, you can also, if um, the customer has a uh, <coughs> that actually uses this, you could click and go see its health. In addition to this, you can see how many of them are being managed by Ariaka, how many of them are procured by Ariaka. So under config, the managed circuits page actually shows that this particular customer has four circuits that we manage. We did not procure it for them. They procured it for themselves, but we manage this on their behalf. So the customer can click, so can we. We can go look to see what is the name of the provider, what site this exists in, who are the technical contacts, who are the provider site contacts, and all of these details for them. Additionally, under the reports tab, there is link reports that help them understand their ISP's utilization for any given month. They can see what is their peak looking like, which is max of in and out. They can see their 99th and 95th percentile. And they can also see what we call peak usage indicator, which is how many minutes in a month did the, the usage on the circuit uh, live above the 70% threshold that we've set. So it kind of helps them figure out how well their circuit is doing in terms of their utilization. And further down, we do things like measure average loss over a month, average latency over a month. So it kind of helps them figure out um, how well their circuit is doing overall. OK. Next is service level reports. I'm going to switch to an account that lets me see service level record, uh, reports. Give me a sec. OK, so this user actually has the permissions to see service level um, SLA reports. So we measure five different types of statistics to help the customer see their SLAs and if, to see if they're in violation. Not every customer is eligible for all of them because they might have not purchased some service. For example, out here, there's high level, high availability. This particular customer has not purchased high availability in our ANAPs or on our POPs. So you'll see that violations are zero and there are no records to show. But on our private core, um, you can see there are 1,512 records for this specific month, and you can click view details to see for each site, for each site pair, was there a violation or not. And if you suspect a violation and did not see a violation, you can click to see why there is no violation. So it will tell you if there was loss events. Yes, there were loss events, but it was only 0.001 percentage, and the threshold is 0.1 percent. So it gives the customer an idea about why, if any, were there no SLA violations? Or if there were, where were there violations? And they can get in touch with their account manager with Ariaka and tell them, hey, I see several violations. Uh, let, me, let me talk to you about getting credits for them. Right? Um, they can also download these. They can download these, and then they can bring it up and maybe examine what happens over the past several months and have a conversation with the account manager about that. Right. The last use case that I have set up to show you is contract management. So a customer with the correct permissions can actually see the, quote, the contracts that they have set up with Ariaka. There could be multiple, and you can see them one by one. 
Right here in the summary page, you can see the, the identifying number, um, what is your total monthly recurring charge because of this particular contract, and how long is the contract window. So how many days are left, when did it start, when did it end, and so on. And on each of them, you can actually see specific SKUs that you purchased, what cost did you purchase it for, how much of each did you purchase, and so on. And then if you want to keep track of um, what your deployment looks like, there is a tab right here that lets you see for each purchased item, how much did you purchase, how much did you deploy. So you can see um, for, let's say, private core subscribe bandwidth in the rest of the world region, they purchased 20 Mbps and we have actually configured 20. Um, I can scroll down to show you an example where um, the customer actually had contracted five links uh, for last mile management. We are actually managing eight links for them, which means that they are oversubscribed by three. Or if, uh, for example, they bought two sites to be able to connect to each other via the direct internet capability, uh, but none of them have been configured yet. That means they're yet to deploy them, and um, that means two are available. So they can manage their contract and their deployment lifecycle using this tab in MyAriaka. One random question. The last uh, example you gave, you mentioned the customer wasn't licensed for high availability. Mm -hmm. What is meant by that? Does that mean high availability for two devices at a location or multiple locations? Right. So each site can purchase two types of high availability. One is for their physical devices that they deploy at their site. So your in-apps can be deployed in high available mode, where two in-apps are deployed instead of one, and they can be in active standby mode. Uh, and one can take over from the other seamlessly when one fails, but you have to purchase to be able to do that. So it's a thing that a customer can buy. It doesn't come native with the service by default. The other thing that they can buy for redundancy purposes is the POP redundancy. So in the event that they could not connect to a POP because of either a POP failure or several different ISPs having an outage for whatever reason or an earthquake in a region, they wanted to contact a different POP. So like San Jose back up into Los Angeles, you can buy the option to do that. So if you do, then those SLAs kick in. Darn. What else? Would you like to see more? I can show you more stuff. Here. So I'd, be, uh, I'd be curious. Hey, this is Ed via Delegate Online. I'd be curious to get into some of the details of your TCP optimization and SSL optimization. Um, or I don't know if that's something you're planning to cover in the presentation, but I would love to get into the nitty gritty of that. Yeah, we can talk about details and TCP optimization. So um, we have two ways by which our customers can um, break up. I actually, I don't know if Natty has a slide on this, but I can talk through it. Um, let's say the customer deployed with no ANAPs at either site. So now your site and its client with their own routers and switch, sorry, their own routers connect to the nearest POP, then that's your first TCP segment. Then POP to POP is your second TCP segment and the remote pop to the remote site without an ANAP is your third TCP segment, right? So let's say, in simple terms, SYN from the client tries to approach the server. It traverses via the pop tunnels, lands on the nearest pop. Um, here, the pop uh, decides to intercept the traffic and say, uh, if, if the config lets him do that, the pop is going to respond with the SYNAC instead. So now, as far as the client is concerned, the TCP section, so session is established with the nearest pop. Um, and the nearest POP continues to respond with acts to data um, so that as far as the client is concerned, the RTT is whatever the nearest POP's RTT is. While now the TCP, there are other TCP segments that are now working in conjunction but separately to get the traffic across from the client to the server. But if there were an ANAP, the connection setup is exactly how I described earlier, but now the ANAP begins to respond, respond to the acts. So to the client, it looks like the server is truly within the LAN. So now your RTT is even smaller, so less than 10 milliseconds, as opposed to, let's say, 20 or 30 milliseconds for the pop is at. So the TCP optimization works by having an Ariaka device, either an ANAP or a pop, respond to the TCP SIN, SYNAC, ACK data um, so that the end devices feel like they're corresponding with somebody nearby. In addition to that, because of the way the core is set up and because it is guaranteed a certain SLA, like how Natty showed you on our portals, we have some certain thresholds that we expect is going to be the latency, the loss, and the jitter between pairs of pops. Our TCP um, um, optimized, well, I'd rather say the TCP um, algorithm is adjusted to be um, 
tuned to that core. So we are expecting a what we call a fat pipe or a hose between the two pops that allow for a large rate of data transmission between two pops at a fixed RTT, fixed jitter, fixed um, loss. So it allows us to manipulate TCP a lot because our meshes are pre-known to us because our core is guaranteed. We are able to adjust how TCP behaves on the core. And on the edge, we tell them, because you are as close as you are, um, your TCP performs very different because it thinks it's a LAN when it's actually a WAN. Sorry, while we wait for Natty to come up, you actually had two questions. The first was TCP and the second was? The other was SSL. Right. So um, Ariaka lets you do two types of SSL interception. One is where the customer can share their certificate and private key information with Ariaka using our secure vault and have that certificate be in play in our POPs, or we can issue a certificate on behalf of the customer and have the customer cert trust our certificate authority. So our cert essentially mimics what the customer cert would have been if they, if they owned that certificate. So now a certificate is in play in our network. So when the SSL handshake comes through, much like how when TCP handshake went through, we intercept the SSL handshake and present the certificate on behalf of the server, but instead it comes from our POP. So now we're able to be man in the middle and decrypt the SSL encrypted traffic and take a look at what's inside and then proceed to do other uh, optimizations that may also be configured for the traffic like ARR or GZIP or SMB or anything else that might be in the way. We have troubles. You have troubles, okay. Is, is it's it cool. Start well, letting me while share, we're at it, share regarding the SSL, do you guys do uh, SSL one, uh, TLS 1.3 as well, or are you guys just, just on uh, 1.2? We are at 1.2 right now. We have a roadmap item for 1.3. Okay, cool. And and in addition to SSL, we also have a SIFS proxy. So SIFS is a very common chatty protocol, right? SMB uh, protocol, right? So that proxy actually helps minimize that uh, packet traversals over the WAN because the ANAP can actually act as a SIFS proxy. So it, it immediately acts back to the client and the server at both ends. So that also reduces the chattiness. I had a slide, but I'm not able to join the Zoom and share that with you. I sent you to Teams. Teams. So I have one question about, you said your, your backbone, your pops, you're, you're leveraging a lot of global colos, Equinix, for example, others. Uh, if you have a customer that's already got a point of presence in, in those colo environments, do you allow private peering into your backbone through an ANAP, or do you always require an internet last mile into your backbone? No, so we have customers that actually have their cages in Equinix, and so we can actually ship them an ANAP. They, they connect to the fabric and come to us. So that's okay. almost dedicated private peering. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right. Okay, I'll go back to showing you more things about my Ariaka if you guys don't have other questions. Um, down here is what we call order management. What order management is, um, is what I had described briefly earlier with one of the questions is, um, it could either be a change that you're asking to make right away or a change that you're asking to stage or a change that you're asking to pass on to customer support. Um, you can see a history of it right here. So you can see who asked for what changes and when, and you can click on one of these and see exactly what has been asked for. So this is um, a new configuration that somebody had asked for. I can go back and see, okay, this one says update site. I can click it and see, Somebody logged in and changed the site name from what it used to be. It shows up in the Harvard text and what it changed. And on multiple tabs, the yellow color change indicates that something was changed. So previously this item was empty, but instead of filling it in, the cheeky user has just filled in a question mark and moved on. Um, so you can go back and see um, history of the changes that were made um, right here. Um, you can also do user management. So you can have, in addition to having a locally managed user database, you can also turn on single sign-on. So you can use Okta and Azure, or sorry, Okta or Azure to uh, do authentication for you so you don't have to rely on your local login on MyAriaka. Um, Vault is something I br mentioned briefly. So if you want 
to provide your own certificates to us to do SSL decryption, then you can securely upload your certificates here. At no point does a human touch your certificate. It gets uploaded straight into a vault and uh, presented to each of our proxies as needed. Um, what else can I show you? This is a cloud security connector that this site has set up to Palo Alto. So they have, the, they have a Palo Alto Prisma connection. So you can see what volume of traffic went there, what applications were deployed there. And you can also see the health of each of the tunnels that the site has. So it looks like there is no loss. There are no tunnel errors. And you can also see the flows on um, that particular cloud security connector. Um, I'm going to switch to a different account where I can show you what, um, what we do for traffic steering. Earlier we mentioned that a site with an ANAP can deploy redundant tunnels to our POP. So in normal cases, those tunnels behave as active standby tunnels. But if the customer wants to and they want to use both their circuits at the same time, they have the option of saying, one of my ISPs seems to be behaving better when I say send VoIP over it and I want to adjust which application goes over which circuit. So they can write configuration to say, this particular application is going to traverse my second or secondary tunnel instead of my primary tunnel. They can also say, I'm running out of capacity on each of my ISPs, please load balance all of my traffic or some of my traffic. You can also say, I have very loss sensitive application and I don't care what the cost of this is, take that same traffic and replicate it on both of my circuits and make sure that it arrives at the destination. So we can do that. Um, we can also do things like, uh, in addition to path selection, we can turn on our own loss recovery mechanism. We have what we call PLR, path loss recovery, which detects loss on TCP or UDP traffic and recovers from that loss. And we also have a mechanism that we use to do the jitter on our site. So you can do all of this and actually see what volume of traffic went through each of these various mechanisms. So if I switch to VPN path Ariaka, and I can show you what that looks like. Click apply. Let's just take that volume of traffic. And down here, we have an engine called Linkashore. Linkashore tells you what did the engine do to the traffic? Did I choose a specific path? Did I leave it unsteered and let it take the default path? And then each of these, you can see, did I load balance some portion of it? So each of these are configured to act differently. So you can click it and go see exactly what happened. So here it's telling me that 41 gigabytes of best of our traffic was um, configured to prefer the primary tunnel over the secondary tunnel. Obviously the customer could have also flipped the config if they needed to, but that's how this particular customer set up their config. And you can drill in and see the details, like how much was the wide area network traffic, how much was it on the LAN, how much went on each of the various tunnels and so on. So it gives you visibility on exactly what happened with each piece of traffic that made up your total wide area network. You could see that Ayaka in the market has a unique approach, right? We have a completely cloud-delivered network, WAN as a service, and uh, we are the global scale. Uh, we are really POP-centric with our own POPs, which we can place wherever we want. They are basically interconnected, high-performance mesh, uh, where we control the, we completely control the underlay. Uh, we are very flexible because we can connect, make establish the connections on demand, whether it's you know, to any cloud, Alibaba, Google, AWS, China, US, et cetera. We can make all these, these connections. We accelerate, right? So uh, connections feel better. Um, so it's a complete solution. We are layering in security. We already have security with where we use third parties layered in as a managed solution. Again, deliver that uh, very agile, high-performance uh, cloud uh, experience. This architecture allows us to build in native security services, which will really provide that same experience. But now with security, you can enable all these security resources everywhere. And again, it's convenience, right? It's very high performance, and you can just, on demand, you can place and control all these security functions.